And um, so, yeah, going to move on to Dr. Titi Busa's talk now. Um, Titi probably needs no introduction, but I, I will do a little bit. So she's a former colleague of mine at GSTT, where she was a lead ICC nurse whilst also completing her PhD. There she looked at developing a psychoeducational intervention for patients with a new diagnosis or genetic diagnosis of an ICC. She then moved on to the Associate Director of Clinical Research at BART and is now the Nursing and Midwifery Director for the Southeast GMSA as well as the Chief Nurse, as if she didn't have enough on a plate. <laughs> and Titi is going to talk to us today about upskilling the ICC CNS team to provide genetic testing. Thank you, Titi. Thanks so much for that very kind introduction, Steph. I'm just showing my screen. I hope that's coming up now. It's not in presentation mode yet, but yes, yeah. it is now. That's great. Okay, mm -hmm. you've got it. Okay, thanks so much for the, the kind invitation and it's a real pleasure to be here. And um, the talk that I was assigned was upskilling the inherited cardiac conditions CNS, so Clinical Nurse Specialist Team, to provide genetic testing. But I thought a lot of the stuff here would be applicable um, to many of, of the MDT. So I kind of put that in, um, in uh, sort of to, to highlight the CNS, but I think this will be, there's something for everyone here in terms of education, education and training. Um, so Ellie has already touched on um, the big strategy for the uh, for NHS England, which is accelerating genomic medicine. And uh, this is the vision that um, the power of genomics will be, you know, in predicting, preventing, diagnosing and disease and targeting treatment will be accessible, accessible to all in part of routine care in the NHS. So it is imperative that all of us have um, upskilling uh, in genomics to uh, realize um, this vision. And these are the four sort of um, uh, priorities um, that uh, this uh, strategy aims to uh, fulfill, which is to uh, embedding genomics through innovative service models and delivering equitable testing, um, enabling precision medicine, optimizing treatments and delivering new therapies, um, enabling genomics to be at the forefront of a data and digital revolution, and of course, evolving the service through um, cutting edge science research and innovation from bed to bedside. So rapid translation of, of research. And again, I just um, mentioned the National Genomic Test Directory. I think it's worth looking at this um, in, in terms of the, the testing that you may provide for your patients. Um, this will tell you all the tests available uh, in the NHS uh, in England, including rare and inherited disorders, which includes the ICC group, um, cancer, the technology uh, platform by which it test is delivered, the clinical eligibility criteria, and who is able to um, request the test. And all these tests are funded um, by NHS England. And just to highlight in terms of rare and inherited diseases, um, the specialist areas on the left, um, of course, cardiology is highlighted there. But, um, you know, if you've got other um, features uh, for your patient, you might want to look at um, the other specialist areas, including metabolic, mitochondrial, musculoskeletal and neurology. Um, some conditions which may have cardiac manifestations. Um, and then there is also the availability of rapid services called R14 for children, very sick children. Um, this is a whole genome sequencing, uh, which obviously some, some children will have um, grave cardiac issues, um, and this will all be part of that um, analysis. And these are all the types of tests um, uh, that are available from uh, whole genome sequencing um, to single gene testing. Uh, pharmacogenomics will increasingly become a, uh, you know, one of the um, uh, sort of no routine tests in, in, in the NHS, I suppose, as more and more um, come on board. Um, but at the moment, um, this is uh, mostly for um, uh, MTR and more urban variant for now, but slowly we are just getting quite, quite a few more um, uh, uploaded onto that. So watch this pace. It gets updated every year and they're trying to make it a little bit more user friendly because at the moment you will have to scroll down through a PDF to kind of find out what tests and information about the test that you're um, wanting to, to request. Um, and part of the infrastructure to deliver this vision for the NHS, for NHS England is um, the Genomic Medicine Service Alliances. And if you're not yet familiar with this um, uh, organization. It's a wraparound uh, entity that supports the systematic embedding of genomics into routine clinical care, working with member trusts, but also the regional 
the clinical genetics department and the uh, genomics laboratory hubs. Um, we aim to facilitate rapid adoption of scientific advances and work in collaboration with our partners across discipline and across the geographies to really bring about the ambition for personalized medicine and care plans. And uh, you can see on, um, I, I look after North Thames and also South East Alliance, but you can see in England, you will have a nurse um, and a midwife contact um, wherever you are uh, in England. So back to nurses, nurses and midwives and why they are such a, we are such a priority for training education uh, in genomics because um, we are the largest section of the NHS workforce and are really well placed to optimise the contribution of genomics to improving health. We're very close to our patients right there at the bedside and whether we like it or not, it is in our NMC proficiency standards. Um, so everybody has to have a level of genomics competence um, depending on their role. And the good news is like in inherited cardiac conditions, there are already many involved in these specialized role, but there's a general awareness our genomics mindset that is needed for all. And we need more nurses and midwives to really lead this field and ensure equity of care. And part of that is really making sure that um, our ICC nurses have, are competent in genomics. Um, and uh, here you can see that, you know, all of us need this competence as well, because as part of the uh, genetic testing sort of pathway, you can see that almost all of us will have either and the nurses will have an active or supporting role in any of these uh, genetic test phases, uh, whereas maybe uh, genetic counsellors might have a, a particular roles in this. All of us, you know, will be part of this this whole pathway. And there is a national approach to genomics education, and this is through the National Genomics Education, which used to be called Genomics Education Program. And this is mainly, um, it's a four sort of step process, which to identify the NHS workforce needs, workforce needs um, in particular specialties and roles, build the networks and join them all across the country and really find out what type of training they need um, and develop these resources to educate and develop the workforce. and then. Um, as an end result is to increase awareness of genomics across healthcare. And um, if you ever do check out their website, um, there is a plethora of learning resources that you will find um, on the um, genomics education website. Um, and, you know, it, it goes from genomic fundamentals, genomic uh, the conditions, the testing process itself, and also to the advanced and computational genomics. And you can and then there's a variety of of resources that you can use in clinic, online, massive um, open uh, access courses, um, face to face or remote university study, and of course getting mentorship from those more experienced in genomics. So you can chop and change a lot of these resources. But I think a job for us to do is really create a menu for inherited cardiac conditions, so it's easy as, at a glance to see which ones um, would be recommended for, for the specialty or anybody interested. So um, just to highlight some of the resources, so the in-clinic resources, we have GNOTES. Um, it is still sort of in beta form. And so um, I think if you're working in primary care or in general cardiology, um, this could be helpful. Um, and uh, at the moment, the in-clinic resource includes um, uh, guidance on SADS, uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and familial hypercholesterolemia and many, many more dis disorders are coming on board. Actually, if you would like to develop some resources, please do let us know um, because um, I think these ones are best developed with the uh, user users and clinicians. Um, and then the Knowledge Hub is sort of the um, uh, sort of the more sort of kind of um, encyclopedic bit of of the um, in the clinic resource, which you can have uh, further reading. Um, there is also the uh, WGS or whole genome sequencing patient resources, um, which can be quite helpful in um, if you need leaflets um, and, and uh, forms actually uh, are also on there. And then you've got the um, clinician guides, um, and these are all practical sort of steps on how to request whole genome sequencing. Um, and in particular, it, it's it's all across the rare diseases. Um, and then there are the online courses um, that you can choose from. There's plenty from um, sort of 
bite-sized five-minute sections to a whole 30-minute um, sort of genomics 101 sessions. And then there are some that are role-specific, that are curated resources, um, uh, genomics and midwifery and genomics and nursing. These are very, very introductory uh, courses, but I think it just helps you develop that um, genomics knowledge um, up to coming up to your specialist knowledge in inherited cardiac conditions. Now, the MOOCs, um, uh, this one in particular is um, a guide to genomic testing for rare diseases and I think talks about the practicalities, also reinforcing some of the bits that Ellie had mentioned uh, around uh, sort of special considerations um, uh, with testing. Um, and uh, again, this is all online and, and it can get you can get certification for this. Now, uh, you're a university study, and I think this is something that we recommend all, um, in particular, the ICC nurses who are um, have part as part of their job to really offer uh, genetic testing is the genomics and counselling skills course um, offered by the University of West of England. These are funded and I've been told that um, they will continue to be funded uh, in, in the coming years. So I encourage those of you, um, and this is not confined to nurses, AHPs as well, and um, doctors and trainees, um, to um, you can undertake uh, this course as well. It's a, a good foundation and um, some some participants here probably can give you feedback on their experience on that. Um, and then um, you can take a lot more modules, a lot of other modules. There is a cardiovascular genetics module. Uh, I believe that's offered by St. George's um, University. And again, that touches on um, inherited cardiac conditions as well and funded uh, as part of the Masters of Genomic Medicine program, which is fully funded. Um, and uh, apart from taking your specialist um, modules, you could take um, sort of the foundational ones. And also uh, there are others on um, uh, computational genomics, pharmacogenomics and other things that may uh, interest you to build up um, a full master's um, uh, degree. Now, going specifically to uh, nurses and nursing education, um, we have been uh, very fortunate to receive a grant from the Burdett Trust uh, called, and we've called it High Impact Cardiovascular Nursing Interventions for Inherited Cardiac Conditions. And the aim of this project is really to uh, be able to educate all nurses uh, and engage them in um, awareness for inherited cardiac conditions. So um, for everyone, uh, we hope to develop a um, uh, ICC awareness uh, video, so short film and a an online module that anyone can take so that they can have the basics, um, uh, basic knowledge about ICCs um, and be able to, um, within their practice as, as, as a nurse, have that sort of foundational knowledge. Then, of course, you've got a lot of um, specialist nurses in, in the cardiovascular field, and we would like them to have extra knowledge as well in, in inherited cardiac conditions. So arrhythmia nurses, heart failure nurses, uh, rapid access chest pain nurses, if they would like to um, have that sort of a bit of knowledge as well in, in addition, because not everybody um, is part of a, um, a specialist clinic. Um, the nurses will be instrumental in signposting and you know, identifying those red flags for a referral to the specialist clinics. And there will be a um, mentor body program for, for, for nurses, um, uh, which will allow um, a specialist nurse from uh, a unit, um, uh, maybe a DGH or even um, uh, within a specialist centre, but they're not an ICC nurse, to have some additional exposure according to, to what they're already, um, their baseline knowledge is on ICCs. And finally, uh, for the uh, inherited cardiac conditions, CNSs, um, we will provide a top up to the uh, counselling skills uh, training that they've already had uh, through the skilled helper course, which will consist of a foundational course, um, but also hoping to um, uh, design a train the trainer course uh, so that um, the nurses or whoever takes the course will then be able to um, uh, facilitate um, uh, teaching of, of, of this um, of this course as well. And just as a, a, a summary or the concepts of the uh, skilled helper program, um, this is facilitated by a, a gentleman called a psychoanalyst called Ryan Phillips and um, is based on Egan's um, uh, 
skilled helper uh, principles and, and three-stage problem-solving um, uh, decision-making framework. Um, and um, I think this is sort of, you know, Ellie talks about the various um, aspects of decision making uh, in a um, uh, to do a, a genetic test, um, and whilst there is also the technical and scientific knowledge that that's needed, there's also the psychosocial skills that's needed to make sure that patients um, uh, arrive at, at at a sound decision that is um, you know informed, um, and so it, this is a parallel process um, where. Um, patients and practitioners uh, work together uh, to get to a decision um, looking at, you know, what is important, uh, you know, stage one, looking at the patient's story, what are their blind spots and leveraging things that, you know, they might have considered or what's important to them, um, looking at the possibilities and what are the options in terms of um, uh, this decision and what what uh, impact that will have on themselves and their families and ongoing sort of management and then looking at um, what to do you know with with the with the eventualities of each decision and looking at what is the best fit and plan for the patient and I think this this was um, developed, uh, this course was developed initially uh, during the pandemic and tested out by the Inherited Cardiac Conditions uh, nursing team at St. Bartholomew's Hospital and also the Cardiomyopathy UK nursing team as part of helping them build resilience uh, during uh, the pandemic period. And whilst it also works in supporting patients with their decision making, it also supports the nurses in um, setting the their, their boundaries, roles and responsibilities, um, and also keeping them safe in their own sort of psychological um, um, health um, it, with it, when working with these difficult um, situations. So um, this is will be open to nurses working uh, in the ICC field in uh, within the southeast um, uh, uh, patch for the for the G GMSA, and we will be um, announcing. Well, we're still waiting for the trainer to come on board for this program, but um, in the coming months there will be calls for these various projects. And then uh, finally, just as to to mention the NHS uh, genomic networks of excellence um, that are meant to bring together academia research. Um, sorry, acad academia, um, industry, charities, and the clinics, uh, clinicians, um, and the various services uh, to really um, kind of look at um, technologies or um, concepts, um, well, actually not concepts, but actually um, interventions that are sort of oven ready, it just need a little bit more of a boost to get them into um, mainstream practice. Um, and um, one of the proposals that was put in for genomic network of excellence is a cardiovascular. Um, I am not able to, to announce the full sort of package that's uh, available yet as, as a result of that, but we will certainly be engaging everybody um, in this. Um, and just one small part of the package is um, looking at mainstreaming of um, uh, cardiovascular genetic testing. Uh, obviously, this will be looking at uh, those done by um, nursing staff as well. And so deep dive into the various models um, of mainstreaming and in, with a focus on inherited cardiac conditions um, and then um, touching on other rare diseases. But also um, it, it is a means, so any funding for that is a means to upscale the Burdett uh, project so that more uh, nurses uh, uh, across England will be able to benefit from it. Um, and just as a um, other resources that you might want to check out are Genomic Lunch and Learns, um, which is at every first, uh, every fourth Friday of the month. Um, and we do have a library the last, um, uh, session was on uh, sudden cardiac death um, and also cardiac pathology. So if you want to check out that recording, that will be on the website. Um, but it is a different topic um, every month and we have uh, tuberous sclerosis complex um, next. Uh, but you'll be it's amazing, though, how we've gone through quite a number of conditions and a lot of them do touch on um, cardiac phenotypes, which is very interesting. Um, so if you want more resources, these are our websites. Um, and please do get in touch with us if you want to, if you have any questions about the GMSA, want to get involved, 
if you've got an interesting project you want um, some sort of support with, um, and particularly if you know any kind of co-design, particularly around the Burdett project, so plea to the nurses really, um, that if you want to help develop these resources, please um, contact me. So um, I hope that was helpful um, in giving a little bit of information around um, the resources available uh, for all. Um, and thank you very much for having me here. Thank you very much, Titi. Um, it's a huge amount of work that's going on in that area, I know. So thank you for breaking it down and explaining it very clearly. And if you're OK to stay around till the end, we'll have a, another Q&A. Perfect. Thank you.